Hi everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome to the dungeon. My name is Robin and today is Lamp Working 101.63. Today we're going to talk about the fish scale pattern, which is like the oldest pattern in the book. And if you're like me and you get obsessed with being repetitive and adding dots, this is like the perfect bead to work on. The pattern is so cool and I find while I'm working on something like this, it is extremely soothing. Um, it can also be extremely frustrating, but if you can get past that first row of dots, I promise you things will get easier and easier as you go. All right, I hope you guys are all doing safe and well. And on that note, I will see you all next week in the dungeon. Okay, I'm gonna to start this bead out with a base of white. And I'm just gonna start by uh, gently wrapping the glass on my mandrel. Sometimes when I work with white, I tend to see, I don't know if it's white or just the color, but I do tend to see bubbles sometimes rising up um, from laying the first row of glass down. And usually when that happens, it's because your mandrel is not quite hot enough. So the action of you putting on that really soupy hot glass will kind of make um, the bead release steam a little bit and you might get a bubble in, in your color. So you always wanna make sure those are all popped and ready to go before you start adding any kind of design or second color to your bead. And here I am just um, adding, you know, adding all my glass that I need. I want it to be a little bit longer here. So after I add this little bit of edge, I will keep shaping it up. And I'm just trying to get to this perfect, very soft bicone shape to begin my pattern with. I'm gonna add a little bit more. I always, I don't know why, but I do always add a little bit more, um, just depending on how large I want to have um, the bead be. It's easier for me to add those top rows after I have a nice and stable under bead, a base bead to add to, especially when it comes to the edges. I like to have all my edges nice and secure before I continue to add more. And adding this bit in the center made it a lot easier for me to um, get to this shape without struggling with the edges. All right, now it's time for our first row of dots. I am just using a regular size rod. I'm going to take the end off just to make sure that I don't have any bubbles that I'm laying down in the flame. And I'm going to add two, three, how many? I don't know six dots we're going to add the first row is six dots it depends on how you apply your dots how large how small it depends you know maybe you'll get five on the first uh round but um it just depends on how large the bead is and you know how many dots you're adding and i want to add them nice and close together so when they heat up they're almost touching and then the second row is adding that same amount of glass using the same rod, same size rod. I'm not using a stringer or anything like that. And you're gonna add that perfectly in between each black dot halfway up. Now on top of these white dots, I am going to use, my color palette today is all of the pale colors that Ephetri has, which isn't a whole bunch. But this first one is the Pink Transparent, and it is so pale, I must say, you almost, I, I, it was so hard to photograph this color. It's just almost, almost clear with a hint of pink to it. And I'm just going to melt, every time I add my dots, I'm going to melt them all down without using any tools. I just want to free melt them down into the pattern. Now on the third row here, I'm going to go ahead and go back to the black dots and add 
the same size, you're pushing at the same rate, you're heating up the same amount of glass, you're adding it to the tip of each one of those small black lines. Then we're gonna heat this whole thing up. I love to watch how the colors heat up and melt out into a larger bit of glass. And that's what you're looking for when you make this fish scale pattern. Every time you add the dots, you want them to expand to their maximum so they're almost touching each other. This row, because I'm working on a soft bicone shape and the center is wider than the edges, I am finding that by, by looking at it, I know I need to add a larger amount of glass. And then by heating this up, everything will smooth out and melt down. Make sure you're melting it evenly or the dots will not melt down at the same time. And that's what you're looking for. Everything to happen at the same time. And you see this pattern showing up again. And on top of this, I am adding the lavender blue transparent. This is a very beautiful, very light uh, lavender color. <laughs> and I like to add these to the white layer. It looks really nice. It gives it depth and it does help to widen those dots a little bit more. If you feel like the dots are need to be bigger or closer together, then add another dot of color to each dot and then melt those down. All right, the next row is just black again. So I'm adding right to the tip and I'm getting to be a more normal sized dot here because now we're going on and uh, we're um, going back down in size. You know, I hope you guys noticed that after the first um, two rows, I turned my mandrel around to make it easier to work on the other side. Uh, that's why I like working in the middle. So I'm sorry I didn't say that earlier, but that's um, what I just thought of. All right, now everything is really melting down nice and you're getting that great shape and the pattern is there. Um, so now we're getting a little bit smaller, but I'm still gonna add a nice big, dot in between each of these black dots. Haven't gotten to the smaller dots quite yet. There is a little wiggle room when you add dots. If they're not perfect, but they're very close, you almost don't really notice. So don't worry if every single dot is not exactly where it, you think it needs to be placed. If it's somewhere around that area, you, you'll more than likely be all right. Okay, our third transparent color here is the Aqua Pale. Adding the dots, being obsessive when I add my dots. I'm always heat the glass, get a nice little ball on the end, and then push down. I'm pushing down every time until I almost feel like the stiffness of the rod, you know, as I push it, and then you pull real quick to get the uh, that nice dot. So now that we're reaching the end of things, I am going to start gently, gently, kind of shaping this up a little bit. I want that end to start to taper in slightly. And I'm just gonna give it a very light shape on the marbling table just to get that, just to get that going. Now we're gonna add our black dots again. And you can see how nice um, those colors give it that, um, 3D effect. Like you can almost see under these scales. A 
Okay, these black dots here are a little smaller than I was making them before. But you just, either way, you want to be comfortable when you do this. And, you know, use your own judgment on the dot size. I don't know about you guys, but for me, sometimes it can take several, several attempts <laughs> to get the pattern just right. All right, I'm gonna shape that up a little bit more. And I'm not really, sh you know, heating the whole bead up anymore. I'm just really working on that one edge, even though I still wanna maintain the heat throughout the whole bead. All right, here's our last color. Well, on top of the white. We'll um, put these little white dots on and I'm getting smaller as I go. I'm adding all my heat just to the edge and not only will that melt the dots down, but it'll help to melt them towards the mandrel. All right, this final transparent color is Emerald Green Pale. I think all of these transparent colors worked really well together. And um, I wish it, it had photographed a little bit better, but you know, that's okay. You can almost see everything there is to see, except for that pale rose. All right, so we are just about done. Just gonna gently round that out. And now we need to add our final row of black. I started by using a regular size black rod and then immediately um, kind of figured I need to use a small stringer for this very last row, just to get the dots the right size. And that is it. All I have to do is melt that in a little bit, give it a tiny bit of shaping at that very edge just to bring it all together, and we're done. Awesome. I hope you guys enjoyed this. It was so cool to make this pattern. And yes, I was very happy when this came out of the oven. So satisfying. All right, you guys, on that note, thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.